Russia's Golden Ring cities are some of the most beautiful and historic in the country. This is Russia as it used to be, filled with churches, ancient architecture, and a gentler pace of life. And one of the jewels in the crown is Kostroma. Just a four-hour drive from Moscow, it's a regional capital that's home to just over a quarter of a million people, and it lies on the banks of the Great Volga River. Now, when I knew I was coming to Kostroma, I was expecting a few relaxing days of sightseeing and strolling through the city. So it was a bit of a surprise when our first stop was a wild and windy village, and there was an eerie howling in the background. Now, this may not look like the most hospitable weather, but if you're a certain type of person and a certain type of animal, this is pretty much paradise, because this is the home of the Northern Hope Dog Racing Centre. And as we're about to see, it's like a United Nations of racers right here in Kostroma. This is no ordinary project. Mushers have travelled here from Australia, Canada and the USA because as well as putting on contests, Northern Hope is a refuge and therapy centre for young people. That I'm really well known for mentoring of teenagers uh, in life through the dogs, through dog sledding. Barbara has flown all the way from California to take part. Uh, the work that I do with teenagers in America is very similar to what she does with the boys, is using the dogs as a way for um, the boys to be able to reconnect with other people. So it's a great way, a great lesson to teach them about being self-confident and truthful and focus and determination. And you can teach that by using the dogs as an example of how well you're doing with that. Come here. This is pretty much what I do when I'm training him. I find that exhibiting dogs at shows is great fun. And day-to-day -day handling of dogs is also very interesting. Anton is someone who's felt the benefits firsthand. He came to live at the center three years ago and is now a qualified race referee. He says it's really turned his and the other boys' lives around. Your view of Mother Nature changes completely, and so does your treatment of the animal world. And he's certainly popular with the residents. <laughs> you see, he's really fond of having his belly tickled. Okay, let's go home. There were plenty of last-minute preparations going on. This is a long race, and the dogs have to be checked over thoroughly before they get going. I'm talking about literally straining at the lease. These guys just can't wait to get started. No such thing as sleeping in for a husky, I think. And once they'd been given the go-ahead, it was over to Anton at the starting line to put them under starter's orders. So we have Barbara and her team here leading the way for the international races. As you can see, some of her dogs wearing the latest in stylish fashion. And... And they're off! Good luck! 50 kilometers to go. Rather them than me, I think. But the dogs are having fun. Let's go! The teams race at intervals through a forest track, and I headed out to join Chief Referee Terry at the halfway point. Ask her if she's okay. Is everything good? Yes, yes, everything's okay. He and vet Carolyn check the dogs over to make sure they're still in fine fettle and that no rules have been broken. We've got to do a little inspection. Yes, we've got a really very shy lead dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Terry's ex-CIA, so people tend to do what he says. Okay. Okay, thank you. Once all the teams were through, it was a race back to the finish line to see the dogs in. And it was a homegrown Russian team who picks up the honours. The mushers headed off to celebrate, and it was time for me to make my way into Kostroma. But you can't exactly flag down a taxi in these parts. Good Well, we're in Rome. Daiken Snicker are by far the best way to travel. Good! Kostromar's history dates back almost 900 years, and when you take a walk through the city centre, it's easy to see why this is a major attraction for travellers. But there might just be an ulterior motive if your other half suggests a romantic weekend here. 
This is Russia's jewellery capital, producing around 25% of the country's gold, and they turn out sparklers in their thousands. One of the region's biggest factories employs nearly 800 people, and I'd been invited to see how a ring makes it from the drawing board to the display case. Once the workers have a design, it's carved into a mould, and then that's used to make a 3D wax model. Squeeze it very hard, and then into this machine. Okay, so that's enough. We wait for the magic to happen. So that then goes off to the metal casters and you'll be seeing that in gold fairly soon. But when you're dealing with hundreds of rings at a time, you need to find a way to speed up the process. Each model is attached to a miniature wax Christmas tree, which is covered with plaster. And then it's time to start adding the value. This machine does the casting. The flask is placed here. And a few hours later, you've got a stocking filler fit for a millionaire. Originally, there was wax in there, but now it's gold. And that one has turned into silver. Gosh, you wouldn't imagine they'd be so heavy. We just have to cut these items from the fur tree and release them into production. And my ring just needed to have it stone fitted to make someone a very special present. OK, so maybe it's not quite my style. But you don't have to be rich to pick up an authentic Kostromar souvenir. The region is also the centre of Russia's linen industry. They've been spinning and refining it here for centuries. And the local textile museum is home to a group of ladies who still make clothing the old-fashioned way. Lubov is the museum director and a lady who knows her linen. But getting the flax to the loom is a drawn-out process. Initially, it's picked by hand from the fields before being crushed in a wooden grinder to release the threads. This was a straw, now it's a bunch of thread. Once the threads are broken down, they're combed through with a variety of implements, including a brush which looked like it'd be more at home in a torture chamber rather than a house. Be careful with that, wouldn't you? Gosh, deadly weapon. Once it's fine enough, the thread is spooled onto a large spinner, although you definitely need nimbler fingers than mine to do this properly. Yeah, yeah, just keep doing it. This is harder than it looks. Apparently, the father of the family used to give the first loom here to, or the first spinning wheel to, a six-year-old girl. So I'm a little bit late in my training. Keep doing, keep doing it. But it wasn't all work and no play. Apparently, the spinning was really an excuse for a good gossip. Normally, between 12 and 15 girls at a time would work side by side. Their tongues were in tune with their spinning wheels as they spun out fairy tales, sang songs and pulled the boys to pieces. The threads are dyed with fruit and vegetable juices, and then they're ready for the loom. It was common for the women to work 14 hours a day preparing new clothes, but there is a bit of a knack to it. And here you go. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, would you, to look at it? But actually, this, using the loom, I find this far easier than spooling the thread. Of course, saying that, I get stuck. <laughs> and after all that effort, the family have a wardrobe to be proud of. The ladies would make everyday clothes and clothes for special occasions. So apparently a beautiful shirt like this would take about a week's solid labour. Of course, really, I need some trousers to go with it. But I think, left in my hands, it's going to take me about six months. So I'm going to leave the girls to do what they do best. With more than 500 dotted around the town, you could spend days checking out all of Kostromar's historic and cultural monuments. But there's one figure in the city whose statue and reputation stand head and shoulders above the others. He was called Ivan Susanin, and his name has become a Russian byword for patriotism and bravery. And there are always people ready to tell his story. Back in the early 17th century, the Russian nobility had just elected the first Romanov Tsar, Mikhail, to take the vacant crown. The young prince was living in Kostroma, and he needed to travel to Moscow to be crowned. But there were several other people who wanted the throne for themselves, and the king of Poland sent mercenaries to come and find Mikhail Romanov and kill him. But they hadn't reckoned with one man. Ivan Sosanin was a local peasant living in the region. 
And when the Polish troops approached, he offered to take them into the woods and to Mikhail. But he had a surprise in store. Susanin led the Poles deep into the forest. They were supposed to have spent almost a day walking through the trees and heading towards the swamps. But Mikhail Romanov didn't seem to be getting any closer, and the Poles were starting to get angry. As the story goes, Susanin refused to continue, telling the Poles he would never betray his prince. And that was only ever going to have one outcome. So you can see what happened to poor Ivan. But the Poles by now were so hopelessly lost that they never made it out of the forest. Mikhail was crowned Tsar, and Ivan Susanim wrote himself into the legends of the Russian people. Fortunately, our Ivan was able to make a miraculous recovery. But maybe the Poles had been going about it in the wrong way? Mr. Susanin, where can I find Mikhail Romanov? If you go right across the swamp and the clearings in that direction, you'll find Mikhail Romanov there. See, all you have to do is ask nicely. And it turns out Russia's first Romanov Tsar was back within the city limits. See, I knew that Susanin was really a trustworthy fellow. If the Poles really had wanted to find Mikhail Romanov, this is where they should have been looking. This is the Apatiev Monastery, probably the most famous building in Kostroma. It's hardly changed in almost 700 years, and Mikhail's house is the main attraction. It may have a rather brighter paint job now, but this was the house where the young Tsar lived with his mother, and every Romanov Tsar since came here to pay homage to the place where their dynasty began. Susanin had come good, and I was all set for a date with another local Kostromar celebrity.